You are watching a special presentation from Tinkle Group Gaming. Hello guys and welcome here to the Jello Cup Series. This is race number 8 and for the first time in Jello Cup Series history I do believe unless you count um, Surfer's Paradise from last season. This is the first Jello Cup Series street course race in the history of or in history today here at Long Beach today we present to you the King Taco 350 I'm um, Brian here in the booth with you starting from the pole today will be the number five of Dick Clark to his outside will be Christian Bracken in the number 45 for 2311 I do want to note of course you might have saw knockout qualifying results um, so you saw that Reggie Fogelman was the seventh guy, which would technically put him in the field. However, because Michael Collins is a past champion in the series, he has replaced Reggie Fogelman in the field and will start in last today using one of his seven championship provisionals. So Michael Collins in, Reggie Fogelman unfortunately heading home. So, just wanted to give that update again. So, slowest will always be replaced by the, the former champ. Or by the guy using the past champion's provisional, rather. Anyway, let's not delay much longer. We have a 1.98 mile street course. And we've got a, about 22 laps here today to determine who will be the first ever Long Beach, first and only Long Beach winner in the history of the Jell Cup Series. Who will it be? We'll find out in a moment. Let's roll the intro and when we come back, the green flag in just a moment. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the nameless. I'm awake. Up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me, I exist to remember your story I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory, yeah Don't want a life that is complacent or possibly boring, yeah Just want a life that is worth every day exploring, yeah My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me my whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Here we go, through the hairpin These guys getting ready to get going here from the Long Beach circuit Hairpin probably going to be the trickiest corner those guys are going to face besides the fountain as we're underway here at Long Beach. The fountain will be another difficult corner and is very, very narrow. It is going to be almost impossible for these guys to go two by two through there. And Dick Clark has gone to the lead. And I apologize for the camera views. Little did I know the cameras were not going to look good here. Another thing, there's no room for error. You see all those tire barriers right there. That means these guys are going to have to be almost mistake free because those tire barriers will kill your race. Christian Bracken trying to catch the five. Also to note, this is the last race of our West Coast Swing here today. Now we'll head down the long front straight. These guys will catch a lot of speed here. Up to fourth gear, a little bit off the throttle to make the corner. Oh, 
go high above to show you the fountain. See all these cars getting through. Something happened to the 12, I don't know what. Might not have taken the initial start, so Jaina Fogelman trying to get back into this race right now. Of course, like I said, last leg of our West Coast Swing, this race has replaced Sonoma on our schedule. So we will not be going to Sonoma this season. come to complete lap number three. See, even though this track is just a hair shorter than Sonoma, the lap time's just slightly longer than Sonoma. course as mentioned West Coast Swing is over after today we will then go to Talladega on Sunday next Sunday we'll be at Talladega um, of course it'll be a solo event for the cup but the truck series for those who are interested will be at New York State Fairgrounds a one mile dirt track in West or er, in central New York so that will be a very fun experience. I don't think we've ever seen a mile long dirt track for the series. So that'll be a fun watch there. Um, but of course, Talladega for the Jell-O Cup Series next Sunday. The part-timers will attempt to make the field as well. Which will only add to the excitement uh, then we will go to Darlington for the Goodyear 400, so not in a double points race, no part-timers for race number 10. Um, we will then go to Charlotte for the Coca-Cola 600, and then we will kick off our international tour with Twin Ring Motegi in Japan. We will then go to Melbourne and then Edmonton. That'll be the upcoming races for the Jell-O Cup Series here on Tinkle Group Gaming. And you see Dick Clark really just getting away early on. Christian Bracken really no answer to get up there. Same with uh, the six of Bradley Ream, but it's good seeing Bradley Ream up front. And same with Cameron Arkman. I feel like he's been quiet since his Daytona 500 victory. One guy we don't see up front, and it's surprising, is Parker Jones Jr. in the number 98. Of course, he was on fire this West Coast swing, winning at Phoenix, finishing second at Auto Club. I think many had high expectations on that 98 coming into today, and unfortunately it's just not materializing. Um... Here we go. Dick Clark through the fountain turn. Of course, this track holds IMSA and IndyCar events just recently, actually, and it's the second longest running IndyCar event besides the Indianapolis 500. So, one thing to note there, and now the Jell-O Cup Series getting its shot around the Long Beach circuit. Of course, um, that race for IndyCar and the IMSA uh, you know, and IMSA, the uh, Acura Long Beach Grand Prix. Today we got King Taco. Not officially, they're not paying me, so. But. Here we go. Let's ride on board with Dick Clark, by the way. He does have 
our helmet cam. We appreciate him giving us that view. Now we'll ride on board with him for a lap. Get the fourth gear. Had to lift a little bit. Down to turn one. See, there's a little bit of a runoff. Here we go. Fountain turn. Hard on the brakes. Probably the tightest turn. No mistakes allowed there. <clears throat> and into kind of a carousel. Another long straightaway here. Take another turn. Back up through the gears, down to second. Up to four. And that's the turn the NTT IndyCar Series had issues with this time around. See, down to first, then to the hairpin we go. That is the hairpin that, that I thought would be troublesome. Then you see back up to speed down the front straight. And this is really the highest speed part of the track. These guys get up to 165. But that is a lap around Long Beach. And nobody's been able to challenge the five so far. Now we wonder when will we see pit stops. <clears throat> and I imagine those will be coming relatively soon. That might be the best chance to pass. There's hardly been any passing in this one. And the top ten from the start has relatively remained the same. Be an almost solid run. Sorry, just looking to see if we do have any battles. They're all kind of racing respectively right now. Yeah, they're all just single file right now. Looks like Colin Cropley, Nikolai Sykes might have gotten some contact. Austin Shaw is back there as well. Wondering if he's got any damage or if he's just on a cycle of stops. It's possible. Looks like the 45 made his stop. Yeah, 45 is in, 99 is in. And they're out in a way. So I expect the five should come in this lap or next. 
That means this will be a two-stop race, unless some guys decide to be gutsy and push it even further. I mean, it is just a one-mile, or just under a two-mile street course, so, I mean, it's not like it'd be too far of a drive, but a lot of slow parts near the end of the track, so it might be a little bit tight trying to make it back around. And you see Dick Clark, he hangs kind of to the inside there. And now he will make his stop, as will the 6, the 54, the 8, and others. Doesn't appear tire fall off seems to be an issue here. Daniel Voiles is going to stay out. He's going to try to lead. He might be trying something, trying to get his second win of the season. Of course, so far we've had six different or seven different winners this season. Dave James has also stayed out. Tinkle Sports and Entertainment on that ride this week. We're trying to go high above, see if there's any battles off the pit lane. There is one. It's Colin Cropley and Mitchell Collins. And I think Mitchell Collins will get the position, maybe. Here comes Voiles, and he'll pit this time. Again, probably trying to make it a one-stop race for him. And same with Dave James. Both of them, again, trying to stretch it, see if there's a chance. But here comes the five, and this is going to hurt him. There's just no way they're going to make it around. And the five regains the lead. But Christian Bracken is right there. So it looks like an awful stop for the five. Might have put the 45 right back into this battle. We did see one change up front after that cycle of stops. It is Dick Clark, the race leader. Christian Bracken is right there behind him in that second spot. Then you got Charles Sanford running in third. How's about Bradley Ream? He unfortunately drops back to fourth. We'll see if he can get back up there. Fifth is Cameron Arkman in the number 54. In sixth is Kevin Howard. 7th is Dylan Young, 8th is Roberto Crown Jr., running in ninth right now is Faith Colm at 38, and in 10th is Brittany White. Then running 11th, you got Dan Hummel, in 12th you've got Scott Upton, 13th is Jackie Smith, 14th is Colin Cropley, 15th is Nikolai Sykes despite the damage, 16th is Mitchell Collins, 17th right now is Pretty Shaw in that 42. 18th is Michael Hoax, the points leader entering today. 19th we got J.J. Bell. And then rounding out that top 20 is Nathan Orman. And you see that pit stop really hurt the four team. They dropped all the way back to 22nd. But maybe the strategy pays off. Dave James, unfortunately, he drops all the way back to 31st after that so we'll see maybe maybe just maybe they can make the one stop work but they're gonna have to save a lot of fuel 
if they want to get to the end. And it looks like Christian Bracken was going to chase down that five car. And unfortunately, it looks like he's just stalled out behind him. It is so difficult to make a pass here. Not to mention how, tra how narrow this track is. Even if he gets up there, he's going to have to find the right corner to make a move. going back to the different strategies he meant we mentioned a two-stop strategy and it looks like Boyles and Dave James they're gonna try to play you know press their luck and do a one-stop strategy and again you know the key for them now is gonna be saving fuel but they can't give up positions and they can't give up uh, ground on these guys in front you cannot get that far behind to where if the five pits, or any of these leaders pit for that matter, you can't catch them. So that's going to be their goal. Don't let these guys get too far ahead. But I will tell you, whatever just... And the other thing is, as well, no cautions. Because if we get a caution... That's going to put everybody back on the same strategy, and that means the 4 and the 65, they put themselves in a losing position. So it's a lot to gamble on, especially on a street course where we really don't know what to expect. But again, I mean, they're two veterans. I mean, Daniel Voiles is the real veteran here. Uh, Dave James is just a sophomore in the Jell-O Cup Series. I think I'd have faith that if Daniel Voiles thinks it can work, I think it'll work. And I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Thought I was getting called for a moment. False alarm. But anyway, Dick Clark continues to lead. We have eight laps of racing to go and likely one more cycle of stops. That 45 not really going away. close. Try to hopefully get close enough to force this five into a mistake. He lost quite a bit of time there. in the next few laps we'll start oh we got a caution 
Car stop 34, Alex Underwood. And that just put a wrench in everybody's strategies. Daniel Voiles has to be punching air right now. Unless he still thinks he can make it, but I mean, he's going to have guys with pressure tires and full fuel. I, I just don't know if I'd take that gamble. Especially with 40 cars still on track, or at least 39 still on track. That's a big point swing if he were to try it. Let's go see what happened. Appears that Underwood's car just dies here on the front stretch. I mean, Stu he couldn't get close to the runoff area there. And this track's so difficult with the shifting and all that. But you see, he gets up out of the way, but unfortunately, because he stops right in the middle of the track, they had to throw a full course yellow. Tough break for Alexander Underwood. We'll take you back to the green in just a moment. Here we go, we're getting ready to go back racing here. And oh, the leaders are going to pit. We saw Christian Bracken stay out. So we wonder will any, or we saw Christian Bracken pit under the yellow along with a bunch of others. Daniel Voiles coming in, a lot of them bailing on the start. So that means Christian Brack and Roberto Crown Jr. will lead this race back to green. We're inside the out of turn 4-4 to go, by the way. Here we go. 88, Roberto Crown Jr. looking to steal this one. Outside, he'll outbreak the 45 into the corner and take the race lead away. <clears throat> so Roberto Crown Jr. Now leading the event. We're going to go high above right now so we can show you everything. So nobody really stayed out that hasn't stayed out, you know, or that uh, rather. No one stayed out that hit it under. Or, oh my gosh, I can't even get my point across. Sorry, guys. So the guys who pitted um, under caution are now the guys leading the race. And Bracken trying to close that up. He knows he had this race won off the pit lane, but the Hendrick cars proving they are strong here today. Ninety-nine is trying to stay with the forty-five now, but the eighty-eight leading the race with three laps of racing to go here from Long Beach. And a credit to the camera high above for catching everything right now and keeping up with these cars. Forty-five not giving up. <clears throat> the looks of how things are going we could have our eight different winners so far here we go coming back around to two laps to go and the 88's in, so is the 45, so is the 99. The leader is now Dylan Ibrahimian in that 43. I'm shocked these guys pitted under the yellow. How did they not pack it full of fuel? That 
That is a huge error to make. And now, all eyes at the front. Dylan Ibrahimian, Colin Cropley, Annie Thomas, your top three. this time to the white flag things are gonna get interesting can these guys make it on fuel the hairpin turn 11 and now we'll come to the white flag it's gonna be one lap of racing to go here from Long Beach presented by Mitchell's memes Dylan Ibrahimian is pulling away, hoping to become the 8th different winner. Colin Cropley hoping to also become the 8th different winner, if he can catch the 43. Otherwise, the 10 back there could become the first two-time winner this season, if these two somehow can't make it. <clears throat> Who would have thought on our street course race it'd be a battle between the 43 and the 3. Two legendary rides. And they are duking it out. <clears throat> Man, the 3 is just right there. He just can't make it happen. I don't even feel he's close enough to use the bumper if he really wanted to. And out of the final turn, Dylan Ibrahimian is going to take Legacy Motor Club to victory lane. He wins here today at Long Beach. Dylan Ibrahimian steals that race from the Hendrick cars. And how's about that? This was a race you just had to be lucky right here, I guess. Based on the strategy play. I mean, Colin Cropley, I mean, I know he's going to be disappointed coming home second. But man, it's a great effort for that three team. Big confidence boost as everybody goes to Talladega next Sunday. And how's about Austin Shaw? He was dead in the water early in this race. He comes home in sixth after all that. And then Dick Clark comes home for a top ten, but obviously not the result he was hoping for. He was the strongest car all day here at Long Beach. And the seven car comes home in fourth with no rear end on that car. Unbelievable. We want to thank you for watching. We're going to show you results and your standings. We'll be back for race number nine at Talladega. Until then, goodbye, everyone.